What a rubbish issue. Only joking! And as always, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you want more. How you doing, guys? Big Mac Dance here again today, back once again with another episode of my Warhammer 40,000 Conquest series. And today, I'll be taking a look at issue 10. What do we get inside? We get the Mephitic Black Hauler. That is a £15 kit from Games Workshop. If you buy it from a third party retailer, you can save maybe about 20% if you're lucky. <laughs> so you can save about uh, £3 maybe if you're lucky if you get it from a third party retailer. So you're looking at still around 12 quid. And the magazine, as always, 7 99 So that's a very good value magazine, I'd say. Uh, there have been some more higher, some higher value magazines. Uh, the libra Primaris Librarian one, for example. Uh, but this one, again, is a, it's good value for money. Uh, I always, I still talk about the value for money. If you think I should drop talking about it, let me know what uh, what you think in the comments below. Page one. Here we go. Um, it's got, a, as always, the brief descriptor and introduction to what you get free with the magazine. So the type is a demon engine, roll, uh, mobility, fire support, specialism, tank hunting, escort duty. Mephitic blight hauler is its designation. Uh, weaponry, multi melter, missile launcher, gnashing maw, and bile spurt. So it just gives you a, a brief overview of what the what the unit is. And then um, onto the next few pages, it gives you a slightly more detailed description uh, and it explains what demon engines are. If you don't know what demon engines are, I can explain that for you. Um, it's basically a mixture, a melding of machine and a demon spirit. Uh, the demon is bound within the machine and then that's why you get all these uh, sort of fleshy appearance to a lot of the chaos machines. It's the demon's essence uh, bound into bound into the machine. Next page, uh, the Blight Hall of War gear it talks about in a little more detail. Gnashing more missile launcher, multi-melter and bile spurt. Let's read that one, shall we? So the bile spur, a rotted nozzle juts from below the blight hauler's maw. This organic spewer is connected to the foul bile that is brewed within the demon engine's internal organs. After closing in on the enemy, these, <laughs> these noxious chemicals are sprayed from a blight hauler's maw over its unfortunate victims. Enemy infantry and vehicles alike are melted by the corrosive spray. So it's basically bile as you would expect. And then, as is often the case in these magazines, it gives you um, a short story. So the raid on Relthor Prime is a short story in which the Black Haulers play a key role. Um, I won't read through that. And then it also gives you a, a transmission there, which they often like to give you in um, codexes in 40K and rule books and stuff like that. Give you little, little text transmissions, uh, which I, I think just adds a little bit of narrative flavour to the to the universe as a whole. And then it's on to how to build the Mephitic Black Hole. It gives you a nice picture of this sprue. Um, interestingly, I've not really shared my thoughts on these pictures before, but it gives you a picture of the sprue, but what's that for really? Because you've got the sprue, you can see the sprue. It's not like it's labelled any parts or anything like that. So I'm not really sure why they need to give you a picture of the sprue. They could drop that and make that a three page short story or something, couldn't they? Um, just something that I think they could drop if they wanted to. And then it starts to give you brief instructions here, but they're, they're not really the detailed instructions on how to build it, because they're all on the next page, which is, it gives you all the numbered parts, numbered components, and it tells you how to put it together. So that last page, the how to build is spread over two pages, when really it could just be in one page. If there was more steps, I could understand it being spread over two pages. Onto the Blight Hauler's Painting Guide. So, uh, it gives you all the paints that you are going to want to use in this example. Um, there's no McCrag Blue in there, which I think they could have used a bit of McCrag Blue. I would be tempted, if I was painting it this way, I would be tempted to use the McCrag Blue on the little Cyclopean eye of the Blight Hauler, uh, just above its gnashing maw. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a pretty basic paint scheme like we've seen. We've only got base paints and washes, base paints and shades so far, haven't we? P pretty basic paint job, but 
they've not given us any more paints yet. Although I, uh, I do believe there's one coming in issue 13, perhaps. Um, uh, I think it's paint and a brush in one of the next four issues, and I think it'll be in 13. So then, finally, we get to the uh, the tutorial mission bit, vehicle on deck, and then it explains the differences. Um, or what are often the different differences between vehicles and infantry. Um, it basically says, works on the tabletop, the Blight Hauler packs a considerable punch with two heavy weapons, one mounted on each side. It also has a sharp toothed mouth capable of splitting open armour and devouring its enemies. Um, and it's, it tells you that they move quicker and stuff like that. It gives you the movement stats in here, 10 inches. Um, and they are tougher, typically speaking. Uh, they've got 10 wounds. That's basically to reflect their their thick armor that vehicles will often have, military vehicles will have anyway. Um, so yeah, it talks about vehicles on the tabletop and it says, as always, both players read this. Um, the Black Hauler can, can fire all of its weapons in the shooting phase. Each weapon can target a different enemy unit, um, which is great because the scenarios they give you in this um, only feature the Blight Hauler as the Death Guard player. If you could only target one unit, it limits your tactical options. However, um, a common thing for most experienced 40k players to do is the idea of shooting something till it's dead. So, if you are convinced that one weapon can take out one unit or one character, then by all means shoot that single weapon at them and then choose the other uh, choose to target another unit with your second or third weapon um, but what I'd advise to do is shoot all your weapons at a particularly if it's a particularly tough unit or character to take out depending on how many wounds it have the librarian for example has um, five wounds and the three-man squad of intercessors has three uh, sorry six wounds between them so rather than splitting your fire between them two units what I do is target one of them and then and then and I'll, until before yeah until that one's dead uh, then target the next one yeah it talks about vehicles a little bit more on this page uh, it talks about vehicles moving uh, it's got a high move value um, firing heavy weapons a vehicle shoots just like any other model however it may fire each of its weapons at a different target. You must say which weapon is targeting which unit before rolling any dice. That's an important thing to remember. That's what I was talking about. You can split fire if you want, but you have to you have to decide before you roll any dice which weapons are targeting which unit. Um, so vehicles in close combat, vehicles fighting fight and charge in the same way as infantry models. It must be within one inch of an enemy model in order to attack. The Blight Hauler can make three close combat attacks with its maw. Attacks with this weapon wound Space Marines on a 3+. plus. Space Marines need a 5+, plus to save. Uh, it goes into detail about the multi-melter as well. Um, it wounds Space Marines on a 2+, plus. they don't get an armor save, and it causes D6 damage. And it explains to you in this issue, which I think is good, uh, the idea of rolling a dice to determine a random damage number between 1 and 6. It also talks about i think um yeah on the last page it talks about smite again um i think we've spoken about that in a previous issue in the issue that the librarian uh came um and smite deals d6 mortal wounds if you score a roll of more than 10 on the psychic test but it's d3 mortal wounds if you score a roll of um more than five but less than 10. So on the next page, they talk about dealing multiple wounds and they discuss how excess wounds are dealt with. So for argument's sake, if your Blight Hauler is shooting at a unit of intercessors, um, it shoots with its multi-melter, which gets one shot, and then it causes a wound. Uh, there's no save for the intercessors, so then you roll a d6 to determine what damage it caused. Um, and let's say for argument's sake you roll a 4. Now when you roll a 4 that means it takes 4 wounds off of the unit. However, each intercessor only has 2 wounds. So, you kill an intercessor, but because it's only one shot, 
that's not then transferred onto the next intercessor. Uh, the, the two remaining damage is not then transferred onto the next intercessor. Instead, um, you just kill one intercessor. On a d6 damage roll as well, you can also roll a 1. So if you roll a 1, in that case you just take one wound off an intercessor. So the first scenario they gave you in this tutorial mission was the uh, the intercessors and the primaris librarian against the blight hauler and in order for the blight hauler to win it has to kill the primaris librarian and the space marines have to kill the blight hauler in order to win themselves and then the replay mission uh, with extra rules I know it's not got extra, any extra rules in it actually but the replay mission basically replaces the intercessors with the reavers it gives you hints and tips at the end as always. Uh, the black holder is armed with powerful weapons, try and stay out of sight. So as a space marine player, you want to hide your units behind the uh, behind these containers. Uh, if the black hole is here, you get one of your units there and then maybe try and move them around to there and keep them out of the vision of the black holder. If the black holder can't see them, the black holder can't target them. Uh, the Librarian's Smite ability will be useful to take down the Blight Hauler. That's because um, it causes multiple damage. Uh, it's the D3 or D6 Mortal Wounds. And you don't get a saving throw against the Mortal Wound either. So, uh, the only kind of save the Blight Hauler would then get, it normally has a 3-up save, I think. Yeah, the save is normally 3+. plus. Um, but the only save it then get is the Disgusting and Resilient save, which is a roll of 5 up. So if you're causing multiple damage, it would have to roll one dice for each point of damage caused by the D6 Mortal Wounds from Smite, or the D3 Mortal Wounds from Smite. The Black Hauler isn't just powerful at range, it's gnashing more, it's more than capable of killing a Space Marine. So don't be afraid to get your Black Hauler into combat either. And on the final page, it gives you extra rules. So the in the missions discussed, you didn't get to use the bile spurt. So it gives you the extra rule for bile spurt on the last page. And for the Primaris Librarian, it gives you the Force Sword. Um, the Force Sword deals D3 damage. So that's good against the Blight Hauler. So you could consider getting your Librarian into close combat with the Blight Hauler. Uh, the Force Sword causes D3 damage. With the previous rule, it wounds Plague Marines and the Black Hauler on a 5+, plus. it wounds Poxwalkers on a 3+, plus, and Enemy Save on a 6+. Plus. So again, it's making it more difficult for the Black Hauler to make that save. And then it explains Smite finally for the Primaris Librarian. And that's, uh, that's pretty much the issue. Uh, looking ahead to next week's issue, we've got the Primaris Aggressors coming next week. If you don't know what Primaris Aggressors are, here's a picture. Hey! So the Primaris Aggressors are basically heavily armoured space marines that are a bit slower moving. I think they're a bit slower moving anyway. Um, and they have flamers attached to these gauntlets that they carry. Um, one on each hand and the gauntlets also count as power fists. And then in the following issue, issue 12, we are finally getting a Death Guard character. They're even celebrating it with an exclamation mark. <laughs> so the character we're getting is the Foul Blight Spawn, and he is a nice character. We get to see our first Nurgling as well with this character, which is one of these guys here. I hope that focused for you. If not, I apologise. A Nurgling is basically a small, small demon. A little cheeky thing that's always up to no good, trying to infect things with one of Nurgle's plagues, no doubt, and cause general havoc stealing people's weapons and stuff like that. Then I believe, as I said earlier in the video, I believe in issue 13 we're going to get a pot of paint, which I think is going to be Mechanicus Standard Grey, if I remember rightly, and a dry brush, I want to say. But I could be wrong, it could be a large base brush, but I think it's a large dry brush. They're giving us a large... If it is a dry brush, then they're going to show us a new painting technique as well, which is good because I think we've mastered all of the techniques that they've given us in these previous issues. You know, we've painted base colours and we've done washes now. For uh, for the past four issues, I think we've been doing the washes and we've painted base colours since the first issue. So I'm pretty sure most people will have mastered those techniques by now. 
Although, you know, some people would say I haven't mastered those techniques. So, um, yeah, uh, the so that's issue 13. I theorise that's issue 13. It could be issue 14, and it could be that we're getting some terrain in issue 13. So, issue 13 and 14, we're getting either paint and a brush, a paint and a brush, or terrain. So make sure you keep your eyes open for those issues. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.